the insane psychology of Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Let's watch. <laughs> Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. They've been compared. To Rollins does look good in purple. Joker. But in the reality of WWE, That's a nice it's look. a little more complicated than just that. Okay. One thing we can say for sure is without each other, would they have the same superstar blockbuster careers that they have had? Their incredible broken brotherhood and backstabbing betrayals that have defined them since they were in a faction together that was also definitive in The Shield since then it has been maybe some of the most interesting stuff to follow long term in wwe or pro wrestling overall think of all the biggest wwe moments of the 2010s how many do you think you can name that have a long-term effect the way that seth rollins chair shot to the back of roman reigns had yeah breaking up the shield broke them out as individual superstars. Have you ever noticed the demeanor of the overconfident tribal chief? Roman Reigns, we all have to acknowledge him, he's so confident, but once Seth Rollins is around, that tone sort of changes. Why exactly is that? Let's take a very deep dive into the insane he couldn't even He couldn't even help himself at Mania. Like he literally, he sold. He sold because he wanted to take that opportunity and make it about Rollins and hit him with the chair. So, damn, that's crazy when you think about it. ...between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. This is Sports Keto Wrestling. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Come on! You got an opinion? Let's hear it. We must go back to where it all began. He the took his eye off the, the prize. ...of mercenary justice, a young trio who are ready to flip every table in front of them or maybe put someone through every table in front of them in WWE. They truly changed the landscape in the decade to come when they broke out big, premiering at Survivor Series 2012. And the change of the landscape they did had far more than a lasting impact than you may think, until it was decided by the company that the three main event superstars had to go their own ways. An unpopular decision at the time in splitting up the shield, it's easy to look back and see that WWE was right in a long-term way of making Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose into solo superstars. Considering how the three men have become the gold standard of main event pro wrestling in the past 10 years, the decision has proved to be fruitful, even for companies outside of WWE. But in the story that we're going to focus on, it's that chair shot to the back. It all goes back to the trauma caused by Roman Reigns, in a way that still plays into his character today. June 16th, 2014, the chair shot heard round the world when Seth Rollins turned his back on Reigns and Ambrose, ending the shield right after they defeated Evolution in a pay-per-view main event. Seth Rollins was being fast-tracked into the main event by the Authority Group, led by an evil corporate Triple H, while Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose were building their way up as single stars on a much harder path to get there. Roman Reigns was finding much more success in that department, being the hated good guy. It was all coming to a head at WrestleMania 31 when Roman faced Brock Lesnar in the first WrestleMania main event of his career. And as you probably know, it was hijacked by Seth Rollins and a Money in the Bank cash-in. One that we are not forgetting either. In an epic moment, he would end up stealing the World Heavyweight Championship instead, cashing it in at WrestleMania for the first time in its history, and costing Roman his big moment pinning him, not Lesnar. The second time, Rollins had one-upped Roman Reigns and did it in the biggest way possible. While Seth Rollins went on to yeah. carry the WWE on his shoulders for six months as WWE World Champion, Reigns was being built back up so that fans would be more receptive to him. When it came time for their paths to cross once more, Roman emerged as the clear number one contender. He was getting cheered against Rollins as well. But then the weight of carrying WWE on his shoulders proved too much for Rollins and his legs, and they buckled, trying to lift Kane and tearing his ACL and MCL during a live event overseas. The number one man in the company found himself sitting on the sidelines while Roman Reigns went on to pursue the WWE World Heavyweight title. He won it, 
and only to lose it to Sheamus in minutes and then won it back in a feud involving Mr. McMahon. Roman Reigns would lose the title again Ew. and win it back at WrestleMania 32, with Rollins returning over a month later to reclaim the title he never lost. At Money Bank 2016, the stage was set for the main event clash. In an epic match, Seth Rollins shocked the world and ended Roman Reigns' world title run in just two months. Not only did he beat Reigns, but he did it clean. <laughs> Something that just didn't happen to the big dog era of WWE. He once again one upped his former Shield brethren, but karma would come in the form of oh, Dean. Dean Ambrose, who cashed in on a spent Seth Dean. Rollins right there and became WWE champion. That's what you get, <laughs> Seth Rollins. Someone cashes in on you when you're cashed out. Although Ouch. it wouldn't have been surprising to see Roman Reigns win that match, considering how early he was into his title run. Hey, it, it was revealed it that he had failed WWE's wellness test policy and was suspended for 30 days as a result of it. So there were other factors. By this point, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins were technically three and three in televised singles matches. And it was clear as day that Rollins was the one getting the upper hand when it mattered most. Once the summer of 2016 began, WWE finally took the right decision and capitalized on Seth Rollins' popularity, leading to him becoming a good guy hero for the first time in more than two years. While he crossed paths with Roman Reigns, things would eventually culminate in a somewhat less than positive Shield reunion in 2017. The Shield was supposed to reunite in main event TLC 2017 in a three on five handicap match only for Reigns to fall ill and Kurt Angle to replace him in the unforgettable tactical vest moment. Talk about iconic. It was fun for Kurt Angle. The Shield did get their <laughs> reunion when they defeated the New Day at Survivor Series 2017, but the big comeback came to an abrupt halt when Dean Ambrose suffered an injury, which would keep him out of action for most of 2018. While Seth Rollins went on to pursue the Intercontinental Championship, Roman Reigns continued his ascent to the top with a fourth consecutive WrestleMania main event, winning the Universal Championship. Once Dean Ambrose returned, there was a small two-month window there where the Shield had an on-and-off reunion before Roman mm. Reigns would unfortunately have to bow out in a battle with leukemia. Yeah. At that moment, the three brothers looked more united than they had ever had. But as you know, that truly wasn't the case because that same night that unfortunate announcement was shared with the world, Dean Ambrose went on to betray Seth Rollins the same night. Yes, the exact same night. What followed was an unfortunately forgettable rivalry with Rollins and Ambrose, and after Reigns returned quicker than expected, they had one final reunion with The Shield before Ambrose parted ways with WWE and went on to All Elite Wrestling. This is where Ambrose's story comes to an end, and we dive deeper into the real focus people here, Rollins and Roman Reigns. Two years after all of this, they would only cross paths in 2021. Both Rollins and Roman Reigns being bad guys at the same time for the first time in the singles runs of their career. It marked a massive change in their dynamic, which we'll get to very soon. Rollins would actually indirectly help Roman against Edge, but it wasn't just because he wanted to help the tribal chief, it was because he wanted to spite his current rival at the time, the rated R superstar Edge. Remember how we mentioned that share shot from 2014? It still had ripple effects to this current day we're talking about. It was exemplified in January of 2022 when Seth Rollins was announced as Roman's universal title challenger at the Royal Rumble. And this was tribal chief Roman Reigns hitting prime gear really cementing his current in wrestling Darth Vader as character. Roman Reigns was sitting and watching the end of SmackDown in his locker room and somebody knocked multiple times. It wasn't a regular knock. It was timed like the intro of the Shields theme song. Oh, did you hear that? In comes your old buddy, now villain Seth Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When Rollins arrived, wow. the expression on Roman's face Look changed his face. entirely. Oh shit! Yeah, no longer cool, collected, and calloused. Maybe a little. Yeah, shaky. he gets under his skin for the sure. The feud itself may have only lasted three weeks, but it gave the biggest insight yet into the true psychology 
between two of WWE's top decade players. No matter how much Roman tried convincing Rollins that he was the greatest of all time, I'm the modern GOAT, acknowledge me. He knew deep down he could never beat Rollins when it mattered most. On the SmackDown before Royal Rumble in St. Louis, the psychological battles, the mind games between Reigns and Rollins were roaring. And boy, did the tribal chief get mentally whooped in a way that he hadn't seen in years. Roro could overlook the past defeats he had at the hands of Rollins, but that moment, that chair shot that rattled his spine in June 2014 was still ringing in the back of his mind. There was a complete change in his demeanor. Reigns told Rollins that while he tried to forgive him before, he realized that he could never forgive him for what he did to him and his boy, Dean Ambrose. When Roman Reigns said, I hate you, Seth Rollins maniacally responded with a laugh <laughs> and told Roman Reigns that he was a joke and his title reign was a joke and that the bloodline and his entire family was a joke. Roman Reigns Ooh. couldn't control his anger and he shoved Ooh. Seth Rollins who urged him to play into his anger <laughs> and beat him down further. Oh, I love this. If they continue this whenever they come back, I hope they play it out very, very well because I would love to see more of that because I missed all of this. So I would like to see a different era of it. Embrace another chapter. The dark side. Oh, yes, another Star Wars reference. Knowing he was getting beaten psychologically, Reigns attempted to. Especially walk after away. what happened at Mania? Oh, yeah. We gotta. We didn't forget. Before trying to we get a sneak forget. attack in on Rollins, who dodged him and walked away with the W. Even at the 2022 Royal Rumble, Rollins played into Roman's no, insecurities good. by walking through the crowd with the shield entrance and the shield gear. That moment, that intro, the song hitting everything, Roman Reigns' face went. It played so into the match perfectly done this more than because once. a desperate Reigns once again found that he wasn't able to win the mind games when they matter against Reigns. So what did he do? He took the easy sleazy way out, getting himself disqualified when he wouldn't go out and let the guillotine go despite Seth Rollins' warnings with a rope break. So Roman couldn't beat Seth Rollins. And let it be known when people say that Roman Reigns is on the greatest championship reign of all time, the one man he couldn't beat when he was defending that title. I mean, beat him, force him to submit or pin him with Seth Rollins. Once the bell rang, the signal of the finish, Roman took a chair and made sure to repeatedly smack Rollins on the back in an act of sheer hatred and frustration that had eight years of emotional buildup. WWE was able to get out of that Royal Rumble with Roman Reigns as the champion. And Wait, so you had your opportunity. You, you, you already smacked him with a chair before. So why did he let his anger take over at Mania? and throw like that wow that's that's hate that's hatred that's 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 real hatred seth rollins came out of that match with a whole lot more credibility they would not cross you would think he would be satisfied right when both men were holding world championships in wwe seth rollins the world heavyweight championship which was made since no one could get a title off of roman and Roman, now the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, who had united two world titles at a previous WrestleMania. This time, it was Rollins finding himself aligning with a former odd fellow opponent of his own, Cody Rhodes, against The Rock and Roman Reigns of the Bloodline, leading to the biggest tag team match in wrestling history at WrestleMania 40. It was the first oh, ever shit. proper WrestleMania main event for Seth Rollins. Unfortunately, he suffered defeat. And it wasn't him who got pinned. It was The Rock pinning Cody Rhodes. The next night on WrestleMania 40 with that tag team match the night before, determining the bloodline rules advantage for Reigns against Cody, it was misfortune opening the show for Seth Rollins when he would lose the world heavyweight title clean down the middle against the resentful Drew McIntyre. Please don't show me. Don't show me his face. 10 minutes to win the title. 
Him losing his world okay. heavyweight title on night two of WrestleMania oh. 40 seemed like an unfortunate, inevitable side effect due to his rivalry with the bloodline, injuries. No, he was there's a really sad shot of, of Seth Rollins' so face when he on lost. the biggest wrestling weekend of the year. But it was the main event of WrestleMania 40 night two where he had the biggest impact of all. In a main event that was filled with all-star interferences, Solo Sokoa, Jimmy Uso trying to save the bloodline, Jay Uso fighting them off, John Cena coming in out of nowhere, gong, The Undertaker choke slamming The Rock, oh, when the dust settled, The Shield's music hit, with Roman Reigns' reaction not being <laughs> shown on camera. Seth Rollins entered the ring in the tactical vest mm. gear with a steel chair in tow, only to make history not repeat itself for a moment as he ate a Superman punch at the hands of Roman Reigns. Yeah, he this looked stupid mess. at first, but considering how things played out, everything was masterfully crafted and calculated by the architect once more. He knew that if he made a shield entrance, if he brought the history back, that made Roman feel so triggered and vulnerable that he wouldn't be a tribal chief. He'd be a quivering big dog puppy once again. <laughs> Roman Reigns was in a position where he had that steel chair in hand and he could lay out Cody Rhodes and finish his story before Cody could finish it and end their rivalry for good or continue to play on the past bitter betrayals he suffered at the hands of the shield ending on nearly 10 years before. And as you know, he chose to lay out Seth Rollins with a steel chair, directly leading to Cody Damn. hitting him with three consecutive crossroads, pinning him, ending Roman Reigns' years-long title reign, and finishing Cody's story just like I could that whole moment. Seth Rollins was quite literally Cody Rhodes' shield at WrestleMania. Yeah. It was true poetic justice. WWE weaving the thread with so many characters verging on a level of being convoluted but still delivering a purely golden moment yeah. although wrestlemania 40 saw rollins take two devastating losses within 24 hours he managed to live up to his word and played the biggest role in roman reigns's three and a half year run as universal champion by ending it in such a special way. It was truly a full circle moment for everyone involved and ushered Cody Rhodes in as the new era player of WWE. He may have lost, but he managed to take Reigns down, one-upping him for what felt like the millionth time in a decade. Considering how this all played out, it's obvious that there's still a big story to be told between Rollins and Roman Reigns, despite all that they've been through. It's unlikely that we're going to see them for a while, but at some point, their paths may cross again. Perhaps oh, one so. final chapter, one final showdown. I want more. If Cody Rhodes versus The Rock happens at WrestleMania 41, then who's to say night one can't be headlined by another emotional fight between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. But given how different their characters are going to be when they meet, who's to tell what will happen? Maybe their roles will flip. But if they are to meet one final time, who do you think should get the last laugh? Roman Reigns? Or will Seth Rollins eternally be the man who has the tribal chief? That's a tough one. Palm of his hand when it matters most. That's a tough Let one. Let us know in the comments below. Until next. Usually I will have an opinion on that, but I can't even really say because I don't I don't know how I don't know how that could go. I don't know which way that could go between them two. Cause it is kind of like Joker and Batman. Like the Joker is always gonna be there to fuck with Bat to fuck with Batman. So it's like, I don't know. Would y'all ever? How soon would y'all want this to end? I don't want it to end. As long as they play it all right and it doesn't get stale, I'm here for it. But like I said, 2024, I knew we were gonna eat as far as like the storylines. Like they're they've been doing so well. Mania was satisfying. And now we're in this new chapter with uh Solo wearing them goddamn gloves, thinking that he should ignite. Like what the fuck? So I don't know. This is this is good. I'm entertained. Hopefully, whenever they come back, um, we'll kind of touch on that. It doesn't have to be right away, but hopefully at some point we kind of touch on that because I would like to see 
if they do a storyline if they do anything with it how will that play out but yeah it's gonna do this reaction y'all make sure y'all leave some likes and comments down below let me know what you guys think and i'll see y'all in the next one toodles